Good morning, everyone. I'm like Sarah. I'm like, who am I? Where am I? And what am I doing? Uh, but it's so good to be here with you. My name is Carrie Studemeyer, and I'm a project coordinator with the Hamilton County Mental Health and Recovery Services Board. Um, I may end up saying what we call the short version is the board. And so that's what I re I'm referring to when I say the board, Hamilton County Mental Health and Recovery Services Board. I've been a project coordinator there for, well, you sit down, that's the down one, unless I'm holding it wrong. Okay. That way. Like I said, <laughs> <laughs> makes a different what direction you hold it in. <laughs> um, and have enjoyed uh, meeting with individuals and child serving uh, organizations and entities to try to make system uh, improvements um, so that the lives of our children and families are improving um, in the behavioral health world. Um, and so I know my uh, challenge today is to tell you something about the Hamilton County Mental Health Recovery Services Board, our mission and purpose, um, how do we approach our work, and uh, also give you some examples of our work. Um, by a show of hand, how many of you already think you know pretty much what the board does? Okay, okay, all right. Well, I have a, I, hopefully, <laughs> I'll be able to meet the expectation. At least you'll leave here knowing at least one or two new things you didn't know about the board and whatever you believe you know, maybe there's some additional things that you'll find out that you didn't know before. Um, so let's go ahead and get started. This is the mission of our board. It is to develop and manage a continuum of mental health, addiction, and prevention services. I'm stopped there um, because um, the key words is about develop and manage at that point. Develop meaning we create, we enhance, we change. Uh, as Commissioner Reese said, you can't always stay the same because our needs are changing, our families are changing. So that's why it's a continuous um, need to develop and change things as we move forward in terms of our services. And then manage, we know that we are responsible. We're responsible to youth, we're responsible to families, we're responsible to our, our co-laborers and other professionals. Uh, we're responsible to our community. Uh, to manage this continuum of services. And when so, when it says continuum mental health, addiction, and prevention services. So with that, it's a continuum, meaning it's not just one thing, it's many things that we are managing, starting at the prevention end of things, where we do a lot of education and prevention, um, we're moving into early intervention, where we may do um, some early screenings and assessment and referrals to other services. And then as we move along the continuum, uh, we may move to various uh, treatment and crisis services and intervention services um, with people who may have other, I didn't do anything. <laughs> I'll just keep talking. <laughs> um, as um, and individuals who um, have uh, different problems that they may be experiencing. And we want to do that continuum of services in a variety of settings. So that can be in the home, that could be at school, that could be at a community rec center, it could be at a church, it could be at a provider agency. So we work diligently for those continuum services, again, starting with prevention services, early intervention services, treatment services, crisis intervention services um, to be available to youth, families, and, um, and adults, obviously. And, and again, it's across the continuum and it's in various settings. Um, ideally, we strive to support the individual so that they, they are in the community. However, we know that there are times that things can happen that the community alone is not what is needed. So that's where we also develop ad additional services where the person might um, need to go in for respite or crisis stabilization and sometimes hospitalization. But we also are, we strive very diligently to wrap them with services to keep them in the community as well as um, you know, if they have to go to the hospital to try to do what we can to effectively transition them out of the hospital and back into the community and hopefully in a way that they'll be able to stay 
in the community and be successful. Um, and with that, we also develop recovery and resiliency focused um, resources. Um, things like, because you know you want people to be able to live, laugh, labor, and love. And that means that there's vocational services that we also fund, housing services that we fund. Um, sometimes we have a recovery center across the street from the board where uh, individuals can go and form relationships, social relationships there. Um, so we do all we can to um, really build a, on a continuum that builds toward recovery and resiliency. Uh, so along with our mission, uh, we want a positive impact on the community because if people are doing well, then our community is doing well. Um, and that those efforts are then accessible, results-oriented, and responsive to individual and family needs. So those are sort of our metrics to let us know, are we really helping people? That's why, again, we want them, by being accessible, sort of like no wrong door that, you know, Wherever they need it, the resource is available. If it's in, if it's in school, if that's going to be the easiest way for them to get their service, then it's available in school, in the home, at the, at the agency. And of course, all of us through the pandemic learned that there was a need for telehealth and virtual services. We want it to be results oriented. Again, as Commissioner Reese said, um, you know, we can do things that on the surface seemed good, but are we having results from our efforts? So of course, we want that that there are actual numbers showing that individuals are getting better. And again, that they're responsible to, responsive to individual and family needs, that they're what people want, that you want, um, you, as we know about youth voice and family choice, and that it's accessible and what their preferences are. Um, so moving on, why is the board doing this work? Um, so actually, besides our desire to do this work, uh, we are the authority under Ohio Revised Code 340 um, that is legally mandated and uh, charged with leading the planning, funding, managing, and evaluation of public behavioral health care in Hamilton County. So again, there's sort of like a legal mandate that this is the work that we engage in, um, that we plan, fund, manage, and evaluate public behavioral health care in our county. So with that planning, uh, the planning can happen because we are often involved with a number of ass needs ass assessments around needs and gaps in our community. Um, starting, sometimes we get assessments at the local level, then the state level, and even sometimes the federal government asks us to complete different types of assessments. Um, and those things are important because they help to identify what are the gaps, what are the needs, what are the nuances that need to occur in our community. From those assessments, then we plan what needs to happen next. Um, and then we are to fund. So we are restricted. We, as the board, cannot provide direct service. Um, you know, sometimes people wonder, well, why, don't you, the, why doesn't the board? We are restricted. We cannot provide direct service. So we instead use the funds that we receive, which there's origins of various sorts, of course, we are very fortunate here that we have our mental health levy as well as some other levies. Um, we also get money from Ohio Moss. Uh, we, uh, sometimes we apply for federal grants like through SAMHSA um, and get uh, grants that way. Um, and then, you know, there are other f funds that come available um, that help us to fund our various services such as ARPA. So that may arise through the city or the county that we then um, contract with over 30 behavioral health organizations to provide those services. Um, and then obviously, as I said, managing this whole service continuum, because again, we're accountable and we want the best services for our community. And we evaluate that through data, reports. We have to have many meetings to evaluate our um, system of community care. And sort of our metrics about that is, are they cost effective? Are they leading to better outcomes? And are they meeting the needs and preferences of, the, of our youth and families? Um, so those are some of our metrics about what we're doing. But we don't do this alone. Um, we share this responsibility with many community partners. So if you saw my slide, what you would see, <laughs> is that my cue to get off the stage? Because <laughs> I'm happy to do that. <laughs> 
close up shop to get off the stage. Uh, <laughs> but um, we work with many partners. So if you saw our slide, it would show you we have local, state, and federal government partners that we collaborate with, and then we have other organizations that we partner with as well. Under the public systems, obviously, we collaborate with Family Children First, Job and Family Services, uh, Developmental Disability Services, and Juvenile Court. We, at some point in time, and, usually, and even currently, have contracted with, collaborated with each of those entities for various things. As has already been mentioned, HOPE is one of our collaborations with all those, all those public partners systems. Uh, we have specific partnerships that we do with uh, Job and Family Services, one of which is FAIR. Um, we have at times done some work with developmental disability, uh, including training, um, and then juvenile court um, with some work around their, oh, okay, just a little advance. Oh, there's that slide. <laughs> um, our um, uh, uh, juvenile court with the diversion docket, uh, doing uh, functional family therapy and other things. Um, and then with the city of Cincinnati, um, the council uh, will sometimes break, bring issues to our attention and say, what can you do about that? This school needs a therapist. What's happening there? Um, what are you doing about the violence that's happening downtown? are those children who have mental health needs and what are you gonna do about that? So those are some of the things that may come up where people are approaching us to say, what are you gonna do or what's going on in that area or how can you help us with it? How can you help us with youth homelessness as an example? Then we are also accountable to the commissioners. Again, we report on the progress of our levy and then also other um, county departments like the health department and, and even here, the educational service center. Um, with Ohio Moss, um, again, they will bring different initiatives to our attention. For example, zero suicide, that our goal is that there's zero suicides, uh, you know, in the future. And so they'll ask, are you interested in that? How can you help spread that initiative? And then again, the federal government so through SAMHSA, who uh, if we get grants, they provide technical assistance and best practices. Um, on the other side of that are the 30 plus mental health and um, uh, substance use disorder provider organizations that we partner with. Uh, we also have done a lot of work with MindPeace. Most of you probably are familiar with MindPeace. We do, they do a work of sort of coordinating the different providers that are in school systems and school districts. Um, we've collaborated with MindPeace to do specific training around um, like the Columbia uh, suicide assessment and safety planning. Um, and we did that with them along with Children's Hospital. Um, and then there's just other funders. Many of you may be involved with, hey, Greater Cincinnati, uh, which is bringing in all these funders to see how we can come with a 10-year plan to really move the needle on the needs of our, our youth. And also our parent and youth organizations such as NAMI and Parent Advocacy. I'm almost done. Um, so. With that, um, here are some examples. This is not, you know, all encompassing, but it's just some examples of the continuum of services that we funded or have partnered with uh, different entities in Hamilton County. Uh, often I will hear sometimes says, you all do things different in Hamilton County. I'm like, is that a compliment? <laughs> and mostly it is, um, because what, they'll, what they will say is you collaborate with your system partners. We don't always do that where we are, and you try innovations. And actually in our county, uh, we've done some things that actually were ahead uh, in terms of being innovative. And some of them are on here. Uh, for example, family peer support. Um, we were doing that you know, before it became a thing about peer support, and especially family peer support. So the, the board was funding family peer support delivered through Tabber House and Beach Acres. I, I, I can't remember. I've been to the board again 17 years, so it's it's been, I know, over 10 years that we've been doing that. Um, and skipping to 281 Care, I actually started my professional career at 281 Care, which was, it was 1990s, so count that. Uh, <laughs> uh, and so working on the uh, hotline for nine years, including managing it for two years. So 281 Care has been around a long time. Now it's 988. Uh, we started, even again, before the texting thing, we were doing that here locally. And so that's now a feature of that, as well as we're doing a lot of innovations where 
the staff who are uh, over 281 CARE, uh, 988 are meeting with 911. They're also meeting with mobile crisis team to see how they can coordinate all those things and make that efficient and effective. Um, the mobile crisis team, we've had a long time as well, which is a uh, um, clinical team um, paired up with law enforcement that go out to assess youth and families in crisis, to see what they need and, and make referrals, sometimes making sure they get to the hospital if that's what's needed. Um, and let's see another example. Hope has already been uh, talked about in terms of that being an innovation that's been here in our community a long time. Um, and even FAIR uh, has been here. Our, our work with um, Job and Family Services, that for those uh, f youth and families who have mental health or substance use disorder needs, um, that are, it's coordinated through Central Clinic to manage those needs, assess them, and determine what they need and contract for the services that they need. Um, I'll just go back a little bit on this end, with, uh, and then I'll promise I'm going to get off the stage, <laughs> with COPE. Uh, community outreach, prevention, education, because a lot of that is happening in our community. Thousands and thousands of children are being served through COPE um, in various settings. Again, a lot of it is happening in schools, and that includes everything from uh, one-time meeting with youth to educate them around their emotions or suicide warning signs. Um, and then we also really try to encourage evidence-based practices, whether that's signs of suicide or sources of strength, um, and then uh, social emotional functioning like second step. Um, all those kinds of things are happening, as well as teach it, uh, teaching teachers and others, parents, about those things as well. Um, Parent Connects is an, an innovation. Beach Acres actually approached us saying, hey, we want to be in pediatrician offices, where, again, families are, to help them if they're having parenting challenges. And, and starting early, you know, would you be willing to fund us? And so we did fund them on that, and so that's one of the things they're doing. Okay, and then the last thing I want to do is say about Journey. Uh, Journey was a grant we wrote, a federal grant, SAMHSA grant, got $9 million um, for transition age youth because we knew that there were specific needs that they had in our community, and we wrote it and we got it. And even after the funding ended, which has been a fair, fair amount of years, the board has continued to fund Journey. And Journey, one of the evidence-based practices they brought was the TIP model, which is transition into independence process, which is a very a process that it really assesses their life domains and works with them to develop a plan that they agree with and addresses a variety of life domain issues from uh, health, employment, social relationships, et cetera. Um, and some of the things we still do with Journey are special events, the Ask Me Who I Am conference, okay, and the uh, Independent City, and um, as well as we have housing and supports with that. Um, and one last thing with Shakely is because of ho youth homelessness, there's different things we're trying to help with that because of the rising rates of youth homelessness. So the last thing I'll just show quickly is that we know that it's a continuum. This is reflective of a young person who, again, you know, just starting off, they had undiagnosed, untreated mental health symptoms. Um, uh, she received a diagnosis. Most of her service was covered through Medicaid, but not all. Um, and then she received some evidence-based practices, including TIP um, and vocational and housing assistance. And now she graduated from high school, is working full-time. Actually, all, all, by this time, she may be finished with college, um, but she was doing very well, which is our whole point of what we're trying to do. And this is who I am, and you can contact me or um, just the general number for the board. And also out there, you will see a resource guide that has all our various uh, agencies we contract with. And if uh, you ever wonder if it's up to date, you can always use the code, the QR code, for the latest version of it. Uh, any questions? I hope you've heard, learned something. <laughs> Thank you.